that grade 12 with North Star Unit 1, Neuroscience and Empathy. We're focusing on our reading and writing in this video, doing reading one. Great. Let's look at the beginning of this unit, the focus on the topic. Number one, neuroscience is the study of the brain and the nervous system. What are the functions of the brain? Try to think of that. Number two, how is the brain related to our emotions? Is there any connection? And number three, do you believe it is important for us to be able to tune into other people's feelings? Why would that be important and why not? Wow, heavy questions, I'd say. Okay, we're going to focus on reading one. Do mirror neurons give us empathy? What is the word empathy? What is that word? If you're still confused, you can look it up uh, to find the meaning of empathy in English or in Bahasa Indonesia. No worries there. Empathy is where you're feeling for someone else, where you have a certain, um, you can understand people, you feel for people. Yes, that's empathy. First thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on the vocabulary. Now, the bold-faced words. Number one, we have empathy. Two, we have hailed. Three is conduct. Four, orchestrate. Five, simulations. Six, effective. Seven, validated. Eight, skeptical. Nine, overboard about. Go overboard about. And ten, transmitting. It's on the next page. Okay, uh, read the sentences and circle the correct synonym. Oh, what was the synonym again? A synonym is another word which has the same meaning. Yeah, word family, many words, they're all related, all have similar meaning, synonyms. So circle the correct synonym for the bold-faced words. Use the context of the sentences to help uh, determine the meaning of the words. Okay, for instance, let's try number one. We humans are good at reading faces and bodies. We can look at someone and feel what the other person is feeling. Empathy is one of our finer traits. And it may be because we have some special wiring in our brains. What would be a good synonym for the word empathy? A or B? Yeah, of course, it's A, it's compassion, great. Okay, you can pause your video and answer number two until 10. Go ahead. Awesome. As you already know, the results of the activities we will discuss in our Zoom meeting, not right now. Cool. We continue with previewing. Remember previewing? Again, previewing. We do that for listening. We also do that for a text. Um, previewing is to predict the text type and to predict the purpose. You all know there are many different types of texts. We have articles, journals, letters, essays, blogs, summaries, interviews, speeches, and so on. And every type of text has its own purpose. Now, if we look at this one, uh, do mirror neurons give us empathy? Now, this is an article, clearly. Uh, would, if you would look at it, first off, you would think it is an article because of the paragraphing that you see. But if you look at the next page, you can see here uh, different people that are talking. So it might be a discussion, all right? Yeah, don't get fooled. Okay. You're going to read an article about uh, mirror neurons and the role they play in empathy. So it is an article stated here, but funny, there are um, people uh, giving their opinions. Yeah, so what does it mean to put yourself in another person's shoes? And how do you feel when you see someone cry or suffer? Maybe it is good for you to write a very short answer to these two questions as a preview to just understand what we are aiming for. Okay, go ahead. Good. 
keep your responses in mind as you read uh, the interview. So it's a, it's it's a, as I said, it looks like an article as how this paragraph. And as you look at this part of the page, it really seems as a paragraph as an article. But if you look at the next page, you see the names, and then you know that it's an interview or discussion. Let's listen to the audio. And while you're listening, you read along. Listen to the intonation and pronunciation of the speaker. Do mirror neurons give us empathy? Greater Good Magazine, Berkeley, March 29th, 2012, by Jason Marsh. Did you ever have that sensation where you're watching someone do something, serve a tennis ball, say, or get pricked by a needle, and you can just feel exactly what they must be feeling, as if you were in their shoes? Scientists have long wondered why we get that feeling, and more than two decades ago, a team of Italian researchers thought they stumbled on an answer. While observing monkeys' brains, they noticed that certain cells activated both when a monkey performed an action and when that monkey watched another monkey perform the same action. Mirror neurons were discovered. Since that time, mirror neurons have been hailed as a key to human empathy, language, and other vital processes. But there has also been something of a mirror neuron backlash, with some scientists suggesting that the importance of mirror neurons has been exaggerated. V.S. Ramachandran has been one of mirror neurons' most ardent scientific champions. Ramachandran, known as Rama to friends and colleagues, a distinguished professor of neuroscience at the University of California, San Diego, conducted early research on mirror neurons. He has since called them the basis of civilization in a TED Talk and defended their significance in his recent book, The Telltale Brain. I don't think they're being exaggerated, he said a few days ago. I think they're being played down, actually. First, could you explain a little bit about what mirror neurons are and how they were discovered? Well, basically, Giacomo Rizzolatti and Vittorio Galis and some of their colleagues in Italy discovered mirror neurons. They found these neurons in the frontal lobes of the brain, the prefrontal areas of the brain, among what were originally found as motor command neurons. These neurons fire when I reach out and grab a peanut. There is another set of neurons which fire when I reach out and pull a lever, and other neurons when I'm pushing something or hitting something. These are regular motor command neurons, orchestrating a sequence of muscle twitches that allow me to reach out and grab something or do some other action. A subset of these neurons also fires when I simply watch another person, watch you reach out and do exactly the same action. So these neurons are performing a virtual reality simulation of your mind, your brain. Therefore, they're constructing a theory of your mind, of your intention, which is important for all kinds of social interaction. So, you've talked about the role of mirror neurons in motor skills. I wonder if you could elaborate on the role of mirror neurons in affective experiences, in emotional experiences. All I know is they are involved in empathy for, say, touch or a gentle caress or pain. For example, pretend somebody pokes my left thumb with a needle. We know that the insular cortex fires cells, and we experience a painful sensation. The agony of pain is probably experienced in a region called the anterior cingulate, where there are cells that respond to pain. The next stage in pain processing, we experience the agony, the painfulness, the effective quality of pain. It turns out these anterior cingulate neurons that respond to my thumb being poked will also fire when I watch you being poked, but only a subset of them. 
So these mirror neurons are probably involved in empathy for pain. If I really and truly empathize with your pain, I need to experience it myself. That's what the mirror neurons are doing, allowing me to empathize with your pain, saying, in effect, that person is experiencing the same agony and excruciating pain as you would if somebody were to poke you with a needle directly. That's the basis of all empathy. From your perspective, what do you think are some of the biggest misconceptions around mirror neurons, speculations that have yet to actually be validated by science? Well, I think, as with any new scientific discovery, initially people are very skeptical. When people discovered that these neurons do exist and that they exist in humans, then people went overboard and said they do everything. One of the things I argue, and others have argued, is that mirror neurons are important in transmitting skills from generation to generation. I need to put myself in your shoes to observe what you're doing and to imitate it accurately. Mirror neurons are important in that. Right. And that's what culture's about the transmission of those learned skills. Exactly. That's one of the proposals I made. But if that were true, if they were responsible for all that transmission of skills and culture, monkeys should be very good at those things because they have mirror neurons. So, clearly, mirror neurons provide the substrate for those skills, and maybe there are more sophisticated mirror neurons in humans than in monkeys, but they're not responsible by themselves. Those kinds of errors are quite common, but that's okay. Why do you say it's okay? It's how science progresses. People make overstatements and then correct them. Okay, cool. <clears throat> quite a long text. Um... Okay, we come to the part of main ideas. Number one, look again at the preview on page five. Remember the two questions? What does it mean to put yourself in another person's shoes? And number two was, how do you feel when you see someone cry or suffer? And you wrote uh, answers to these two questions as a preview before reading the text. Now, how did your answers to those two questions help you understand this article? Did it give you any guideline? Did it give you any focus? Okay, number two, work uh, by yourself. What would a partner have to say? You read the statements and you circle the three that represent the main ideas of reading one. So there are uh, several statements, five statements, but I'd like you to find the three that represent the main ideas of the text that we have just read. Okay, which three out of one to five are the correct ones? You can pause your video to answer this. Now we continue with the next part, which is details. Yeah. As you all remember, yeah, from the last two years when we discussed, you know that the details are more specific points, more specific facts uh, that help develop a main point. A main point help develop a main idea. Very good. Now, uh, write the letter of the phrase from the box that completes each sentence. So you're going to complete the sentences number one until seven. But you got to complete it with the other part of the sentence. Which one is the correct one? Pause your video to answer these questions. Okay. Now, how did you figure that out? I didn't tell you this before you started doing the activity, but I am reminding you right now, do you remember that we learned about annotating last year? 
basically to annotate, to underline, circle, or highlight the keywords in the, in the sentences just now here, and also in the sentences in the box, would have helped you uh, to more accurately and faster find the connection between both. Remember that, you guys, don't forget, we always annotate. Okay, making inferences, you guys already know this. It's an educated guess that we make about something that is not directly stated. So it is an implied meaning. It is critical analytical uh, thinking uh, important to do in a listening and especially in a text. Now, for inferences right now, we're looking at measuring the author's degree of certainty. There are different degrees of certainty. Yeah, you have um, positively certain, somewhat certain, or not certain. Now, as you can see in reading one, scientists are not always 100% sure of their findings. They may be positively certain, somewhat certain, or not certain at all of the results of their research. As V.S., and boy, that's a difficult name, Ramachandran explains, progress is often made by correcting what may turn out to be overstatements. No, they can be so not always correct or not always certain. How certain is the professor, uh, Ramachandran, about the role of mirror neurons? Based on what is written in the interview, try to determine his degree of certainty. So he plays an X under positively certain, somewhat certain, or not certain. Well, if we go back into the text, we can see the cause, uh, the, mir the mirror neurons cause us to feel someone's physical pain. He talked about that with a, a lot of certainty, so positively certain. Yeah, so you can see that based on the paragraph 7 and 8, uh, he's positively certain that mirror neurons cause us to feel someone else's pain. Yeah, so you can hear it from how they say things, how uh, things are written. Yeah, by the words and phrases they use, we can know whether that is very certain, somewhat certain, or not certain. Yeah, so read each phrase that completes the sentence. Uh, it's, the sentence starts with mirror, mirror neurons. And it continues, indicate how certain Professor Ramachandran is of the statements. It plays it acts under positively certain, somewhat certain, or not certain. We'll do number one together. Mirror neurons are important for social interaction. You go back to the text to figure that one out. That's why it's important for you to annotate the keywords, yes? Uh, mirror neurons, and then social interaction. Go over the text and see whether um, it is written positively certain, somewhat certain, or not certain. And yes, of course, it's positively certain. Okay, now you can pause the video to do number two, three, four, and five. Okay, great. So you can see from the way how uh, writers write, the choice of words and how they formulate their sentences, it will show the degree of certainty. Yeah, if a uh, writer is very certain, they will be very clear, shorter sentences, or they will be very clear in their emphasis on the words that they're using. If it is not so sure, there will be a maybe, a might, right? So by the choice of words in the formulation of the sentence, it shows how certain the writer is. That brings us to the last point, express opinions. Now, uh, there are three questions, and I want you to, share, uh, to choose only one, either one, two, or three. I want you to write your opinion about it and give reasons for it. So number one says, in reading one, mirror neurons are credited with allowing people who observe others participating in a particular activity to feel the pain or excitement of the participants. Could mirror neurons play a role in making people who know how to play a sport get very emotionally involved while watching the sport on TV or in the stadium? Can you think of other times in entertainment or the arts when mirror neurons might play a role? 
or number two, according to Professor Ramachandran, mirror neurons are the basis of civilization. What does this mean? Do you agree with them? Or number three, according to the article, motor neurons are the biological basis of empathy. Do you think culture and family upbringing also play a role in empathy and kindness? And why do you think some people lack empathy despite the influence of biology? Okay, pick one. Write down in a very, very short uh, what your opinion is and give a few reasons why you have that opinion. You can pause your video. Awesome. Now we have come to the end of reading one. Uh, we did some words that are related to the text for reading one. We went over previewing, remember, predicting the type of text and the purpose to get a focus and to know what to read for. We went over main ideas to figure out uh, what the main ideas were uh, in the text, the correct ones, details that are specific facts that help us develop main points. <clears throat> to connect the right details uh, to complete a sentence and by making inferences uh, we can infer the degree of certainty of uh, somebody expressing themselves in a writing in a text whether they are positively certain that means 100% certain or there is somewhat certain 50 50 or not certain at all and we can know that from the choice of words or how the sentence is formulated yeah and it is important to express your view to know yeah learn to reason to have an opinion about something because that helps you to be more critical about issues in and around your world world that's the word okay i wrap this video up right now thank you for uh, participating you did a great job and we'll see each other soon again through another video god bless bye mm -hmm.